Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to go through a lesson on the triangle application theorems. All right before we get started, I have a little problem for you to think about. And that's this problem. I have the diagram is shown and I want to find the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B. All right, so we see that uh, DE is parallel to AB. I have alternate interior angles, the angle A and DCA. So I know angle A is 72 degrees. And then again, I have uh, alternate interior angles for ECB, but I don't know what that is. <clears throat> I do know that a straight angle adds up to 180 degrees. So 72 plus 65 is 137 degrees. And if I subtract that from 180 degrees, I get 43 degrees. So the measure of angle B is 43 degrees. And as it just so happens to turn out, if I add these three together, these three angles A, B, and ACB, they're the same as the measure of a straight angle DCE, which leads us to the proof for uh, theorem number 50, which says the sum of the measures of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And we can figure that out just by doing what we did before in the prior example, <clears throat> but by defining these angles as 1, 2, and 3. If I have angle 1 here, 2, and 3 here, I know that angle B is equal to angle uh, 1, and angle C is equal to angle 3. So I can see that uh, if Angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 measures 180 degrees uh, as a straight line, then the measure of the triangle will also equal 180 degrees. All right, let's talk about some definitions. An exterior angle. An exterior angle of a polygon is an angle that is adjacent to and supplementary to an interior angle of a polygon. So when we say adjacent to, we mean that it shares the same vertex. So I have an exterior angle here, same vertex, and then I have the interior angle adjacent to the exterior angle. The sum of the measures of the exterior and interior angle are equal to 180 degrees. So exterior angle is an angle that is adjacent to, it shares the same vertex, and it's supplementary to an interior angle of the polygon. Which leads us to uh, theorem 51 that says the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. Now, we talked about in a prior lesson several chapters ago what exterior angles are. And exterior angles are the angles in the triangle that are not adjacent, I'm sorry, remote interior angles are the angles in a triangle that are not adjacent to the angle in question. So exterior uh, excuse me again, remote interior angles are going to be relative to the exterior angle in question. So for example, if I say that my exterior angle in question is 1, then my remote interior angles are the angles in a triangle that are not adjacent to angle 1. They're 4 and 6. In the same way, I can draw another exterior angle here and I can say this is exterior angle 7. Uh, An exterior angle 7 has an adjacent angle of 6, so the remote interior angles now are going to be 4 and 2. So again, the remote interior angles are the angles in a triangle which are not adjacent to the exterior angle in question. All right, so now we know what <clears throat> the definition of a remote interior angle is. We can figure out what the value is for remote interior angles. Now I'm going to say that angle uh, 1 is going to be congruent to angles 4 plus 5. And I know that because this angle here, 4 and 5, is going to be congruent to this angle because they're angle 1, because they're alternate interior angles. I have two parallel lines. So angle 1 is going to be congruent to angles 4 and 5. Now I can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 because again we have alternate interior angles. So angle 5. In angle 6, I have alternate interior angles between two parallel lines. Angle 5 is congruent to angle 6. Now by substitution, I can replace angle 5 in the first uh, congruence equation with angle 6 because 5 and 6 are congruent. Now I have angle 1 is congruent to 4 plus 6. 
So the remote uh, interior angles are equal to the exterior angle, or the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the remote interior angles. All right, now let's talk about theorem 52, which, which is called the midline theorem. And I tell my students when they write a proof, sometimes I allow them to write out just midline theorem or some abbreviation of the theorem. But in this case, I say that I need for them to write out the entire theorem word for word. So I say verbatim, and that's what the verbatim is for. And so we're going to prove this theorem, and the theorem has two components to it. The first is that uh, the segment joining the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side. So in this case, HM is going to be parallel to JK. And the second part of it is that the length of HM is going to be half of JK. So we're going to go ahead and prove the midline theorem. So again, it's two components. And the two components are a segment joining the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side. That's component number one. And its length, HM, is half of JK. All right, so we're going to rewrite the diagram. <clears throat> and you can see I have a lovely pink uh, triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend <clears throat> the uh, segment HM through M to P such that HM is congruent to MP. And I'm going to mark up the diagram as such. So I have the three tick marks here and the three tick marks here. I also know that GH is congruent to HJ, and I know that GM is congruent to MK, so I mark those up as well. So I have two tick marks for GM, two tick marks for MK. Those are both congruent segments. GH has one tick mark, HJ has one tick mark. Those two segments are both congruent uh, because by definition and part of the givens, uh, HM connects the two midpoints to the sides of the triangle. All right now I know also by uh, vertical angles that angle PMK is congruent to GMH. So PMK congruent to GMH. Now I can say that triangle GMH, so let's just put this here, triangle GMH is going to be congruent to K, triangle KMP, and we know that by side, angle, side. So we have the side, the angle, and the side, side, angle, side. Uh, because these two triangles are congruent, I can say that GH is congruent to PK. So I'm going to mark up PK with a single tick mark here. So PK, GH, and HJ are all congruent to each other. I also know by CPCTC that angle HGM is congruent to PKM. And so I've marked those two angles with a double round of marks. So PKM congruent to HGM. And if those two are congruent, I know that JG is parallel to PK because I have a transversal in GK. I have two lines in G, J, and PK. In this case, I have alternate interior angles that are congruent that define parallel lines G, J, and PK. So I know then that G, J is going to be parallel to PK. And I also know that HJ is congruent to PK. So now I have a parallelogram in HPJK because if I have one uh, pair of opposite sides that's both congruent and parallel in a quadrilateral, then I know that it's a parallelogram. So I have parallelogram HPKJ. All right. If HPKJ is a parallelogram, then HP is congruent to JK. So HP is congruent to JK. And I know that HM is half of HP. So then HM must be half of JK. So HP then in a parallelogram is congruent to JK. So half of HP, which is equal to HM, is equal to half of JK. So I've just shown the second component of the midline theorem. And then also HM is parallel <clears throat> to JK. I know that because uh, HPKJ is a parallelogram and by definition HM or HP will be parallel to JK. So that's your proof for the midline theorem. I think that's actually pretty exciting. Uh, so let's move on to a couple practice problems just to give you some ideas of how to solve some problems you'll see in your homework. 
All right, if one of the angles of a triangle is 70 degrees, find the measure of the angle formed by the bisectors of the other two angles. All right, the way that we're going to solve this is we're going to define the two bisected angles with x, the variables x and x and y and y. And we're going to say that 2x plus 2y uh, is going, plus 70 is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So we figure out that 2x plus 2y then is going to equal 110 degrees. So all right, 2x plus 2y uh, plus 70, angle 70 or angle D is equal to 180 degrees. So we know that 2x plus 2y is equal to 110 degrees. And x plus y then, or half of that, is equal to 55 degrees. And I know that x plus y plus angle ABC equals 180 degrees. So I simply subtract 55 from 180 degrees. And I have my measure of angle ABC.